Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Sunday School. I'm Pastor John, and uh, and with me today is... Hi, it's Andy. And uh, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you're all staying safe and you uh, continue to be continue to be good. Um, today, we have one of the... Maybe, maybe this is a really well-known story in the Bible. It's probably, I know a lot of people, it's their favorite story in the Bible. It's a great story about Jonah and the big fish. And I'm not going to say too much more about it. I'm going to let Andy read it, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. How's that? All right. So story today is, if everybody can see that, Jonah and the big fish. And there's Jonah. Mm. And let's see what's going to happen with Jonah, okay? Mm -hmm. So, one day when Jonah was just minding his own business, God spoke to him. God said, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh and tell the people that I know they aren't living the way I want them to. I want them to change their ways. Jonah may have started with the right idea, but once he started walking, Jonah began thinking about what a long walk it was to Nineveh. Hmm, Jonah thought, I don't really want to go to Nineveh. I'll go the other way. God will never know. So Jonah walked and walked away from Nineveh. When Jonah got to the sea, he paid to get onto a boat to take him even farther away. Ah, Jonah yawned. All that walking made me tired. I'm going to take a nap. Jonah curled up on a pile of rope and fell asleep. But God, God saw Jonah. Whoosh! God sent a strong wind that tossed the ship to and fro. The sailors were so afraid that they started throwing things overboard to make the boat lighter to save themselves. The sailors worried, what is going on? They woke Jonah up. God is mad at me for not listening, Jonah said, so throw me overboard. And they did. Suddenly, the sea was calm again. Look out, Jonah, here comes a big fish. Gulp, gulp, gulp. The fish swallowed Jonah and Jonah sat inside the dark, smelly fish for three days and three nights. Jonah prayed, help me God. I'm sorry. Finally, the fish spit Jonah out on the beach. Trudge, 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 Jonah went to Nineveh. He told the people what God had said and they believed him and they changed the way they were living. God was happy with that the people of Nineveh were now living as God wanted. Mm. So let me see. That yes. is Jonah inside the fish holding on to it. Looks like a tonsil. Yes. <laughs> That's funny. That's a funny picture. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, whew. so part of the story, of course, is that Jonah doesn't want to do what God asked Jonah to do. One, one of the things that's in the story in the Bible is that one of the reasons is because Jonah just doesn't like the people of Nineveh. Mm -hmm. He doesn't think they're worth it. Uh, and in the, in the Bible, he actually gets mad at God because God forgives him. He gets mad because he, he doesn't think they're worthy of forgiveness. So part of the story for us is that, you know, everybody's worthy of forgiveness. Everybody's worthy of God's love. And maybe there's some people in your life that you don't feel always like that person they're, they're not, maybe they're not worthy of God's love, but, you know, the Bible tells us that all of us are, and uh, especially those who repent and ask God for forgiveness, that they're, that they're part of God's love as well. Um, I was thinking when you were reading, Andy, actually, about how I became a pastor, and I didn't, I didn't hear a voice from God. Uh, that would have been helpful, actually, but a lot of people told me I should be a pastor. And you know what I know? Every time they would say it, I, I think since I was about 17, people started saying to me, oh, you should be a pastor. And I would say, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's not going to happen. No, no, no. That's a bad idea. 
but eventually God just through all, all of those things and, and a couple of experiences where I had jobs where I realized, you know what, I should be a pastor. So I wonder too, with if you're listening and if you're watching, like, what is it that you think that God is asking you to do? What are some things? And maybe you don't really want to do those things. I usually think we're kind of onto something when there's when there's something that we don't want to do, but that we should do, like love other people or care for other people. Usually that's God's way of kind of poking us to do it, right? When we don't want to do it, like Jonah. So yeah. Have you ever had anything like that for you for yourself? Well, Can you sure. think of anything? Sure. There have been times when people people have said, Oh, you should you should take on this responsibility or you should you should go and do this job and I thought oh, I don't, I don't, I'm a, I don't want to do that job I, and it wasn't that I it, I was afraid to do that job you know it's like oh I don't think I'm good enough to do that job and I was afraid mm. to do it and I thought no I'm not going to do that and boy that just kept just like you say it kept coming around and coming around and sometimes I think maybe that's the way God talks to us is you know Sometimes people ask us to do things and we we don't we either we don't believe it or mm. or I was afraid. How did you feel when people kept asking you or telling you you should do that? What did you feel like? Yeah, I think I think you're onto something. I, I felt a little afraid, like I don't know if I'm a good enough person to be a pastor, quite frankly. I, I still don't think that. Um <laughs> but you know, it's not about that. That's what I've learned. It's not about being a good person, it's about helping. It's about telling people that God loves them and that God can forgive them just as God forgives me because I'm not a, always a very good person either. So, um, but yeah, I, I think a little bit of like, I don't, like you said, scared maybe that that's not, that's a lot of responsibility, you know? Um, so I think, yeah, definitely. And ju just, yeah, I'm not good enough. And I think part of too, like with Jonah, like maybe just a little scared of what, other people, <laughs> you know, if you've been in a church a long time, you know, it's not always, people aren't always nice to their pastor. Uh, so I was a little bit afraid, you know, about some of that kind of thing. But luckily, I've had two churches where I've been treated very, very well. So it's worked out better than I than I thought. Well, we're glad that you became a pastor. <laughs> that's, <for sure. laughs> that's, nice of you to say. that's nice of you to say. How did you, now you're an, you're an occupational therapist, right? Yep. How did How did you become an occupational therapist? I, I had a uh, cousin who was a physical therapist and some people, yeah, just said, you should, you should check this out. You should check this out. And it just kind of came together. I don't know. It's kind of funny. It's, it's kind of funny. Yeah. You know, My it's something that I thought of when, when you were talking is, you know, we have these feelings and um, what do you think does like God knows what we feel like he, he knows what we feel like. And how do you think, God felt when um, he wants us to do things. He wants us to do his work. That's, that's what we're here to do is to do his work. And how do you think he feels when he's like sending us these messages to do something and he knows what's right for us or what's good for us. And then we don't do them. What do you think he feels like? I like to think that God knows us well enough to know that we're going to be resistant at first, <laughs> like Jonah and, and, you know, the good thing about God, the Bible tells us, is that God is very persistent with us. That, you know, we might say no, and and but I, I always feel in my life, God is always very persistent about it, like coming after me again and again and helping me to to learn and to grow and to change and to accept the, the things that I can do and should do. So, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe God's a little... I In the story... I don't, at least the way, I didn't get the impression that God was angry with Jonah, more that he just really wanted Jonah, he, he, he kept on being persistent about Jonah doing it. Do you, do you think that's true? That's, that was my that's take. That's true, although he, he kind of made the seas pretty, pretty agitated yeah. Yeah. and he had him. Yeah, he like had to get his point across. Yeah, he took drastic action to get his point across, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And I think that that happens to, that's, you know, I could say that's probably true uh, of me as well, is that people, again, th that idea that people kept coming at me and saying, oh, you gotta, you should do this, or you should do that, or uh, even other times when I didn't want to do something, and it just, like you said, like, I was like, eh, I don't think I should do that, but then it came around again, 
and being kept kept after you. you took know, that as he proof. Does. So. He keeps after us. Keeps and going. Then, you know, he's also very compassionate. He was compassionate with the people in Nineveh, and he's compassionate with us when we say no until we come and we do say yes, and then you know he's yep. probably pretty happy when we do what what he wants us to do in the end. So. That's a great parallel. I've never thought of it before. Right now, of all the times I've read the story of Jonah, that God has persisted both with the people of Nineveh and with Jonah, right? That he's offering them consistently a, uh, a the ability to repent and to, to see the error of their ways and ask for forgiveness and offering them forgiveness. Yeah, because he did. He said, he's, Jonah said, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll go. Do no, it. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, I, and I hope you who are watching at home that, you know, like maybe a good example would be, I don't know if this ever happens to you, your mom or your dad says, hey, you need to clean your room. And you think, I don't want to clean my room. So you don't clean it. And then they have to ask you again and again and again, right? Or or maybe do the dishes or maybe be nice to your brother or sister or whatever, right? Those things that your parents keep having to remind you to do to, uh, that's part of the work of a parent. And in that, in that way, our parents are, are like God to us at that time in your life, right? Like they're helping to remind you to do the right thing over and over and over again. And then when you do it, You'll probably feel pretty happy and proud that you did it. Yeah, you'll feel better. Absolutely. Absolutely. So clean your room. <laughs> <laughs> That's good advice. Good advice. Great. So I had a little uh, idea for a little craft if you wanted to do something at home to think All about right. those things. Think about um, think about God in our life, sending us messages and how he feels and how we feel at different times. And it's, it's really normal to feel different feelings. Um, so what I've got is I've got these little stick puppets. Oh. <laughs> so we've got, what do you think that is? What do you think that person is? Uh, surprise you might be well this one i thought would be worried worried yeah that guy's worried right. what's what's he he's surprised surprised yeah maybe surprised scared mm. scared. scared like ooh. Scared. yeah i see it yep i see it now go ahead, go ahead, this one Man. Mm. Ooh, angry. Oh. Mm. Yeah. and then mm. and then i i see he's making the last one for when we're together it's pretty easy. All you need is a piece of paper or cardstock. I'm going to move this so you can see my desk. So here's my desk. I'll put this Bible away. So all I did was I took a piece of paper. I took a glass and I made a circle around the glass for my circle. Mm -hmm. And I cut it out. Mm. And then I just can, this one will be our happy one. Happy. So we're happy. And then I had some popsicle sticks, but if you didn't have popsicle sticks, I used a pencil or you could just use a regular stick outside. You don't have to have popsicle sticks in your house. Or maybe you have some leftover chopsticks or something like that. Oh, where are we? Here we are. And I just taped this. Nice. And then we have, you know, if you wanted to act out the story of Jonah, you could. Mm. And you could use different types. If you have brothers and sisters or with your parents, and you could act out how are you feeling. Mm. Or sometimes you could just think about that, how God feels um, when we listen and how he's understanding when we don't, but he's always there to guide us back and what yeah. makes us all in the end happy. And it's okay. I think it's good to know. It's okay to feel those things, right? Okay. And, to, and I think it's even better when we express to each other that we feel this way. Um, 
and that helps us to work through those things, I think, when we talk about it, for sure. Yeah, if I said, I'm afraid mm. to do that job, then maybe a friend would have said, why are you afraid? Mm. You don't have to be afraid of it. You could do, look at this. This is the good part of it. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I love it. So good. All right, well, let's have a prayer. Okay. Dear God, we give you thanks this day that you call us to love and care and help all those around us. Lord, when we have our different feelings, help us to know that you're with us and that you can help us work through them so that we can do the things that you asked us to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you, Andy. Great lesson. Thanks, Pastor. It was great to see all of you today. God bless you all. Have a good week. We'll see you next week. Have a good week.